so these are some of the ways in which we use AI and data science in the AWAKE platform. Um, and so I'm going to go through and just kind of explain each of these uh, segments one by one here. So first and really most important, if we're talking about uh, applications of AI or data science to the network, this is most critical, okay? Uh, this kind of came up a little bit earlier, right? We see very, very successful applications of AI on the endpoint in EDR type technologies, and it's tempting to think that we could use those same approaches on the network, and it turns out that that is absolutely and utterly false. That data on endpoints tends to be incredibly structured. You know, if we're talking about uh, analyzing an executable to figure out if it's malware or not, executables are, are very, very highly structured, very rigid and strict requirements about what type of data is allowed in what segments uh, of that file. On the network, we don't have that at all. We have protocols. The software developers don't even need to adhere to the specifications and the RFCs. They can use the protocol for what it was intended for or not. Uh, we have companies constantly creating their own proprietary custom protocols and, and putting those on the network. And so we don't have the same structure to the data that we're analyzing on the network that we do on the endpoint. And that's why this is very subtle. But you may notice I don't really talk about AI models doing you know complete threat detection on the network and and we do hear that in the industry a lot hey look at this ai and it detects the threats and you know if you do see those conversations you see see people talking about that that should really throw up some red red flags for you um, instead ai is much more successful in the network when used in combination with either other types of ai or other types of data science or, or other techniques and we're going to explore that here um, so first and foremost, we need to take this you know, totally unstructured data and convert it into uh, a more normalized form. And the way we do that in a way is we convert traffic ultimately into people and devices. And so you'll see screens like this uh, in the system. And what this is showing us is that there's this particular device that we're looking at here. And this is a very, very common view that we see when using the system. And we see that this device has been on these IP addresses uh, for, you know, in this case, uh, a couple hours. Uh, we see some of these go up to, you know, maybe a couple days. Actually, further down, there's some that are like 20 minutes at a time. And so uh, this device has been tracked, and we'll go a highlight over here, you know, it's almost nine months we've been tracking this device that, you know, uses IPs for a few hours at a time and, uh, you know, comes and goes and, and moves around the network, which is incredibly, incredibly common for devices in, in most enterprise networks. Now, this is so important because what we're gonna ultimately be talking about is uh, analyzing devices and behaviors. And if AI is gonna do that, it needs to be able to understand well, what's normal and what's abnormal for a given device or a set of devices. But if you haven't solved this problem that we're looking at right here, well, then the AI would be analyzing a device for three hours at a time and that's it right and so um this is a really really critical like mo pretty much every network analytics technology you can think of would see in the hundred ip address that make up this device they would see a hundred different devices but no this is one device with 100 different ip addresses over the course of, of almost nine months here um, and so this is step number one prerequisite you have to solve this problem before you can do any more accurate or interesting analytics that are capable of detecting more than than signatures could detect you know you know 20 years ago okay so once we've normalized the, the data and we now have people and devices, um, we start to aggregate those uh, sessions into activities and start identifying uncommon artifacts, right? So uh, we look across all the traffic and, and for this particular device, what we see an example of is the system has determined it's notable, it's interesting. These artifacts are, are uncommon and interesting um, relative to all the other devices in the network. Um, and this device is you know, going to these servers you know, using TLS traffic, and we also see this, this uh, user agent in HTTP traffic. Um, and if you look this up, it turns out that, that yes, this is indeed related to, um, to malware. But this is just the first step, kind of identify these fingerprints of devices and identify what in the fingerprints separate those devices from others. 
Now, once once the uh, AI has identified uh, what are potentially interesting artifacts, well, then it starts uh, uh, looking to see how those artifacts are used in behaviors from that device. So here's an example of another device, and we see over there on the right-hand side some of those fingerprints that have been put together and uh, have helped to identify this device that's going to this uncommon network using uh, an uncommon TLS fingerprint. And what we see up at the top there is this beautiful once every 24 hours or so pattern, you know, once per day beaconing uh, that uh, has actually ultimately triggered some other models. And we will be talking about, you know, models like this in, in a moment. Um, you know, one thing I want to point out here just really quick, because we're not going to get into this anywhere else in this presentation, but it's very, very cool. Um, Awake, we put literally years into developing a domain-specific language, a DSL, that allows the users of our system to come in and not only look at the models that we're talking about throughout this entire presentation, um, but come in and edit them, change them, create your own. It's an open language. There's nothing like it that we've seen out there in you know, the security industry or, or others, yeah, to be honest. But it's an open language that allows you to come in and in uh, terms that analysts and threat researchers understand, uh, develop basically data science models and, and ask the system to uh, you, to to take the uh, characteristics that we're looking for um, and apply those to to models uh, at lower levels of the system. So it's very 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 neat uh, capability there. Okay, so uh, those are you know we've we kind of talked about and I'll show you this again when we pivot over to the demo. But those are models that you know ultimately identify. Uh, potentially, you know, threatening activities, but then there's also investigation. This is where things get really neat, and this is what we're going to focus on mostly in the hands-on demo. But, um, you know, let me, before we get to that, just one last little exercise here to kind of get you thinking about, you know, the AI, you know, the AI application to investigation. So you get an alert for this domain, you know, and, and get the question up here, well, what do you think? Is it, is it good or bad? Well, not enough information here, right? You need to, to do some more investigation. You know you have an alert, but you know, is it a false positive, right? Is it, is it real? Uh, you need to figure that out. And that's what analysts do all day long in organizations with the alerts they get. So if you take this domain and you go search, uh, you know, all of the reputation databases out there, you see that there's no detections for it. It's, it's clean in all the databases. Uh, in fact, you know, you go to a number of other sites you'll find that uh, not only is this domain you know, considered clean kind of across the board, but you know, like we see here, this is telling us this domain is you know, top 10,000 domains on the internet, which would make it you know, incredibly, incredibly common if, if true. Um, and in fact, you know, when we go look at uh, the reputation databases of some you know, very, uh, very you know, large companies out there, you know, one of the largest um, or you know, most common uh, next-gen firewall companies out there, uh, which you know, of course, you know, next-gen firewalls utilize domain reputation. And we look at the reputation uh, in this domain across those types of systems. What we see is that they all come back and say, no problem. You know, this domain, this is a lot like uh, Google or Schwab or <laughs> Amazon.com. So you know, but the more you search, the more it looks okay. So what do you think? You're probably thinking, oh, this is probably okay. And if you did get an alert for this, it's probably a false positive. You know, even going into virus total, we see you know one hit out of 82 <laughs> engines um, considered uh, you know considered this domain to be a problem. And usually, when you see one out of 82, that's an indication of a false positive. Uh, except you may notice over there on the right hand side, um, the uh, icon for this domain is, is uh, Google's uh, logo, which uh, is interesting. I guess this could potentially be a Google domain, uh, although I would probably guess not. And so speaking of Google, if we do a search for this domain, uh, here's what we find. Now, as a human being looking at this information right here, what do you think? Do you think this is good or do you think if you had an alert for this domain and you did the search and you found these results, would you think this is a false positive or a true positive? Well, I think, you know, most people at this point would, if you were thinking false positive before, change your mind and switch to true positive. This is probably something bad. And that's easy for us to do as human beings, right? Now think about this from an automation perspective. If you had a system that is taking artifacts, like say a domain from alerts, 
and going and checking you know reference sources like reputation databases and virus total and all these other places and everything comes back clean what is that automation going to determine it's going to determine it's clean right so uh, this is actually a very um, uh, sophisticated problem for, for automation to solve um, but uh, AI can actually solve it pretty elegantly and so what I'm going to show you really quickly, and this is, I think, one of the last things we're going to see here, I'm going to switch to demo, but I'm going to show you some system internal. So you're getting ready to see some JSON kind of formatted data, um, but this is, you know, this is the under the hood stuff. And the question is, what is uh, AVA, which is uh, our, you know, AI-based investigative assistant, our virtual assistant here, what does AVA think? about that domain. And uh, Ava does a number of things, including you know, searching virus total and all those other sources just to see, hey, is it known bad? But if it's not known bad, you know, that doesn't mean it's no good. <laughs> uh, so so Ava uh, does, does some further digging. And, and what you see here is Ava has gone out and done an internet search, just like we did as humans, where we searched Google and we looked at the results that came back. But Ava not only looks at those summaries that you know we only looked at in that previous slide, Ava goes to those pages and reads the content and tries to understand uh, what what are all these, you know, if, if I can find pages out there that talk about this artifact I'm searching for, what are they saying about it? What kind of things are they talking about? Um, and what this is showing here is that Ava has determined, ooh, you know, this artifact, yes, indeed, it has been found out on the internet. And uh, the things that the internet is saying about it, even though you know Ava wasn't configured to go look at websites like malwarefixes.com or things like that, um, you know Ava found that in the search and then understood through through topic modeling and other techniques that uh, that no, this probably is bad. So Ava does indeed think that that this domain is suspicious or bad. So kind of a neat little example there. Let's go ahead and pivot over and see a more end-to-end -end, uh, you know, workflow kind of utilizing uh, a lot of these, these techniques that we were just talking about. So uh, we're over here, we're looking at a situation and a situation is one of the highest uh, levels of kind of abstract reporting in the system. So uh, Awake is ultimately a full packet capture system. You know, we record all the traffic and it's just layers upon layers of analytics and AI and data science and other techniques right on top of that. Um, which is you know, ultimately what you're going to see here. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the reality is you should not really ever need to get down into the packet data. Uh, so, uh, but we will, we'll, we'll, we'll show that here. But so what do we see here, right? Well, we see uh, in this situation, right, it's titled uh, large download via cobalt strike. So that's, that's the ultimate model that triggered uh, that initiated the investigation. Uh, and so in the investigation, what was found that this system, you know, it looks like this may have been phishing related because the system was not doing web surfing. It was only interacting with email uh, at the time. And immediately after that, the uh, system uh, interacts with this domain, uh, jQuery351minjs.com. Uh, so you may, be very you may very commonly see jQuery in network traffic. Um, however, uh, this domain is not, uh, you know, th th there's no official jQuery domain that's based on a particular version of jQuery. So, you know, funny little trick there. Um, and then finally, we see the download from, you know, this IP address where the download uh, occurred from. And so over here on the map, right, it's telling us Office 365 is related to this because it looks like this was phishing related. Uh, however, it's not red. So this is uh, an acceptable use, but is related to this particular incident. Um, then the system interacted with uh, this jQuery domain, uh, very likely the first stage, and then second stage larger download came from this IP address that that didn't have a domain. Now, here's the thing that is pretty incredible about this. A human did not do this investigation. So we come over here, we'll look at the supporting artifacts, right? We see um, almost every single one of these, uh, a human uh, clicked on the alert and said, hey, initiate the investigation. Um, and uh, we are actually uh, now working on you know, fully automated, no human uh, involvement whatsoever. Um, but uh, you know, human initiate the and Ava 
the AI did the rest of the analysis from here, which is what we see in this icon, these icons. Um, and so, so this is you know pretty interesting, right? These the domains, uh, possible command and control, office365.com, it you know, determines is legitimate. Uh, we see that we have you know Ava analysis of both the IP address, which it has labeled possibly an unknown threat. Uh, we also have uh, Ava analysis for uh, this JS uh, jQuery, also possibly unknown threat. And what's really interesting is when we get into, let's go to the audit log here. Normally we don't do analysis uh, at this level, but when we go through the audit log, what we see is the enormous amount of work being done behind the scenes. Uh, and you know it's worth noting that this domain right here, it was ultimately identified because it was first visited, this, this device first went to this domain for the very, very first time just before this. Now, that happens a lot, actually, when you get uh, suspicious kind of events and you ask that question, hey, what, what has this device done for the first time just before it? Uh, devices are always, 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 especially if you have users on it, you know, and they're, they're surfing the internet, they're always doing new things for the first time, many, many, many times a day. But Ava went further and did that analysis of uh, this domain and ultimately determine that, uh, you know, no, this, this doesn't, it wasn't just the first time. I actually think that this is all malicious and all related. So completely automated uh, investigation there, but driven not by automation, which again, we were kind of thinking about that. How does automation tell if something's bad? Um, instead, uh, you know, a much sort of deeper analysis there. So let me, let's pivot over here and kind of go a little deeper into to the system. So this was the system um, that we were looking at a moment ago. Uh, we were looking at the system details page now, what we call Entity IQ uh, device profile. Uh, and this is an aggregation of um, the analysis of this device actually now over the past 68 weeks <laughs> since it was first seen. Uh, and so we see this particular device has only had one IP address, so very easy to track. But um, we got some, uh, some models that have triggered uh, more recently and we can pivot down into these and, and ultimately get into the traffic, right? Because as I mentioned, Awake, you know, we are a full packet capture system. We record all the traffic, but the truth is you should very rarely, almost never need to get down into the traffic because the automation should be taking care of everything for you. Um, now I triggered, uh, you know, I clicked on one of those models that triggered the spoofed HTTP to AVA analyze destination. So this is kind of cool. So we're talking, we're looking at a threat detection model now, an individual model, as opposed to that AI-driven investigation. And that model triggered because it says this HTTP is spoofed. And you know, again, full packet capture, but we'll come over here and kind of look at the parse data. Um, and you know, when we show traffic like this to humans, in fact, you know, a lot of times investigators will see this and kind of think, well, wait a minute, this is false positive, right? This is this is this is not spoof, this is normal, this is, you know, okay traffic. In fact, if I take this out, you know, we can run this through, uh, uh, you know, user agent parser, I mean, this doesn't, doesn't seem like there's any problems here. Um, in fact, uh, there there is. So the model has determined that, well, yeah, this might be a valid user agent, but it is not valid in the context of this device. This device should not be sent. This is spoofed. Um, in combination with that, Ava has done an analysis of this domain. And when you put those things together, this spoofed header going to this particular destination, and actually, let's put the yes, yeah, so we got this up here. Um, so what did Ava determine? Again, we're looking under the hood, right? So this is kind of behind the scenes, what Ava was thinking about this hard domain name .biz has labeled it a possibly an unknown threat. Uh, why did it say unknown threat? Actually, we saw that earlier, right? Um, by the way, it's worth noting that, you know, in all the categorization engines that VirusTotal uses, which is somewhere around nine of them or so, um, it's totally uncategorized. Uh, but uh, there are some hits in VirusTotal, right? So we do see some malware, and I think we can you know, control click here, right? And bring this up, and we see what kind of malware comes up here. Uh, it is, it, it's okay, it's malware, we have to, it's, it's bad stuff. Um, going back in here, so we have a few samples of malware that, uh, that communicate with that domain. Uh, Ava has also um, identified these websites additionally that discuss this domain that it, it, Ava has found particularly interesting. Um, but also there are very, very, very few results out there. So, you know, that kind of helps uh, illustrate uh, some of the reasons, some of the thinking behind uh, Ava's assessment here that's possibly unknown. Very, very, very little about this known on the internet, um, although there is indication uh, that, that it is uh, risk-related. 
Let's go ahead and come back over here, all right? And so, so we, we put this all together. Um, you know, basically, I wanted to try to very quickly show a demo uh, showing how AI can be used to uh, do both things that top tier human analysts can do, like make investigative judgments in the face of conflicting information. You know, as we saw when looking up uh, domain reputation information, right? A Ava can look and see that, yes, you know, hundreds of other uh, vendors and data sources out there think it's safe, but uh, Ava can make its own decisions uh, to the contrary and uh, decide, no, actually, uh, in the context I see this, I don't think it's safe. Um, but uh, AI can also uh, be used to do things that humans just cannot do, like tracking and clustering and comparing devices over, you know, not just uh, minutes or hours or days, but, you know, months and years, actually, is an example that, that we saw uh, just a moment ago. And, and you know, I, I didn't mention it earlier, but think about this, right? Think about what that AI is doing. Every packet that comes across the wire, every packet it takes up, it has to make a decision. And that decision is, does this traffic I'm looking at belong to the device that had this IP address a minute ago or an hour ago or a day or a week ago? Or is this traffic, does this traffic belong to a new device? And if it's a new device, is this a device that was somewhere else in the network that has now moved over and is on this IP address now? Or is this device completely new to the network that's never been seen before, right? So, you know, that is, that is a job that a human analyst could do probably for a single device with about a week's worth of work and we know this because we used to have to do this in the past but it's it's not something that humans can do you know across tens of thousands of devices and, and over this amount of time um, and you know again by doing that by uh, leveraging ai for tasks like this we can enable without necessarily requiring ai to do more sophisticated detection that alone just enables far more sophisticated and accurate detection to, to take place. Thank you for the time.